Welcome to Brothers of the Word, because brother, you need the word. And we live in a time now where our heroes are these fictional characters. They're no longer real people like they used to have in the old day. When you would ask a young person who their hero was, they could name somebody in the community, but today, most heroes that our young people would name are fictional characters. And our youth today, they know characters from DC and from Marvel better than they know characters from the Bible. And part of the reason for that is there, there are so many movies and shows demonstrating people with superhuman powers. And not only the many in number, but they also are commonly the top grossing movies at the box office each year. So all of this imagery and storylines are just bombarding our youth with these superheroes. And to remedy some of that, since we have a lot of youth that we're honored today and they're present, I speak to you today from the subject of superheroes in the Bible. Superheroes in the Bible. To start, I want to show you a video of a doctor. And this doctor, he uses kids' fascination with superheroes. Uh, before they go into surgery, he dresses them up like superheroes to make them feel stronger and more courageous. So, Avi, if you'll play that video. When the night has come and the land is dark And the moon is the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid I won't be afraid Just as long as you stay Stand by me So darling, darling, stand by me by me or oh, stand wasn't well, that heartwarming how he incorporates that <laughs> and he knows they look up to these heroes and when they put on these capes and these outfits they don't think about the pain that they're about to go through and the illness that they have they believe they can make it through anything when they dress up like superman and batman so I applaud him for just using that imagination of those kids to push past the fear. And let's look at who this generation's hero images are. Put up picture zero there, that first one. And at the top there you have uh, Marvel Avengers and you'll recognize a lot of those characters. And at the bottom you have the DC Justice League. Again, you'll recognize a lot of those characters, uh, even from back in our day, we grew up with Superman and Batman. and We had the old school version. They didn't have all of these special AI effects. And they had to just make stuff look real the best they could, and strings and stuff going everywhere. And last week, I was in a mall in Asia. And even in this mall in Asia, people were, it wasn't a convention or anything, but because they looked up to these characters so much, you would walk through the mall and see them with capes on and with costumes on, dressed up like their favorite characters. And they would have this cosplay where they would have on wigs and be just taking pictures all over the place because of their fascination with heroes. Listen to how much the top 10 superhero movie franchises have made at the box office. Number one is Spider-Man. It is gross worldwide, $8.1 billion. Batman franchise, $4.5 billion with a B. Iron Man, $2.4 billion. Superman, $2.4 billion. Captain America, $2.4 billion. Thor, $1.9 billion. Deadpool, $1.5 billion. 
Black Panther, $1.3 billion. Aquaman, $1.1 billion. And Ant-Man comes in at number 10, it's $1.1 billion. So after seeing all these billions that these superhero movies have brought in, next I researched to see what the highest grossing Christian or Bible-based movie in history generated. And that movie was The Passion of the Christ. And that movie did about half of what Ant-Man did, which was number 10. So the highest grossing Christian or Bible-based movie in history did half of what the number 10 superhero movie did. So that's why today I'm talking about some real heroes that were empowered by God and recorded in the Bible because it's a shame that fiction has outsold truth by many times over. And my daughter Genesis there, she, she went through this period where she was watching a lot of Flash and a lot of these superhero shows and it just inspired her so much. She went through a phase where she just knew she was going to get superpowers. And she would come and I would tell her, you know, these are, these are fictitious. So she said, no, Dad, I believe God, is, he did it for these. <laughs> I believe he's going to grant me some superpower in the future. And she went through probably six months of strongly believing that she was going to get some superpowers. And I don't know if she's still waiting on those superpowers today or if she's giving up on that dream, but we're going to talk about it today. <clears throat> so let's look at these superheroes from the Bible. Superhero number one that I'll talk about is not, it's none other than Samson. Put up picture one. This is Samson. Samson was a man empowered by God with two superpowers. He had superhuman strength and superhuman stamina. The book of Judges tells us that among Samson's exploits, he tore a lion apart with his bare hands there in, in Judges 14 and 6. He also caught 300 foxes and tied their tails together with his bare hands in 14 and 6, well, in, in 15 and 4. He also slaughtered 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey in chapter 15 and verse 15. Then he tore off the city gate of Gaza and carried it to the top of a hill. And those gates are estimated weighed over 500 pounds. He put them on his shoulders and carried them miles away. And that's in chapter 16 and verse 3. And finally, the end of his life, he pushed down the pillar holding up the Philistine temple, killing 3,000 people there in, 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 verse, in chapter 16, verse 30. He killed more people in his death than he did in all his entire life combined. Superhero number two, and we'll look up from the Bible, is none other than my man Shamgar, Put up picture number two there. Shamgar, he was the third judge in the Bible. Most people don't know his name, but he was the third judge. And judge, these judges were leaders before the kings came on the scene. The book of Judges chapter 3 verse 31 says, After Ehud came, Shamgar, son of Anath, who struck down 600 Philistines, with an ox gold, he too saved Israel. And Shamgar, he exhibited what's called in the superpower database, the power of combat embodiment. And that power allows one to become extremely skilled in all forms of fighting, weapons, and both strategy and tactics where numbers of opponents become insignificant. And even our best military warrior today, they cannot kill 600 men if they're equally weaponized. But Shamgar took something that they used to prod an animal with and killed 600 soldiers. Superhero 
Number three that we'll look at from the Bible is none other than Philip. Philip. Acts chapter 8 says, it talks about an angel that told Philip to go and stand near the chariot of an important Ethiopian eunuch. And the official, he began reading this passage of scripture and he couldn't understand what the scripture was saying. And the angel had Philip there by his chariot to hear it. And chapter 8, verse 34 says, The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of Scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled along the road, they came to some water, And the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azadus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Philip demonstrated here the superpower called teleportation. And that power, it allows you to go from one place to another place instantly. And he exhibited that power by the power of the spirit he was with the eunuch one moment another moment he was in another town superhero number four from the bible is that of my man Ezekiel 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 chapter 37 starting at verse 1 it says the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. How cool is that? Ezekiel prophesied and raised up an army of the undead. This superpower in the superpower database is called that of necromancy which is having powers that revolve around manipulating the dead. Y'all didn't know all these powers was in your Bible, did you? All of these superpowers. Superhero number five is that of the great prophet Elijah. Elijah, uh, reading from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 44, says, The servant reported, A cloud as small as a man's hand, is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. 
Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose, a heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. The distance that Elijah ran beating a chariot pulled by horses was about 17 miles. 17 miles. Now our pastor, he's a great runner, but he can't beat horses 17 miles without stopping. Elijah, he exhibited the superpower called supernatural speed, which is defined in the superhero database as having the ability to move far faster than what is naturally possible for the vast majority of beings in that universe. Supernatural speed. Superhero number six is a combination of two brothers, Moses and Aaron. Throughout the book of Exodus, Moses and Aaron, two brothers of the word, <laughs> They performed all type of miracles. They turned their rods into snakes. They caused 10 plagues to call, come upon Egypt, to split the Red Sea, got bread from heaven and quail out of the sky, water out of a rock, and caused the earth to swallow enemies. Moses and Aaron were empowered by God to display miracles that would be in the superpower category of magic. And even though God was doing the miracles, it appeared as magic to the observers back then. They couldn't see God, but they could see these two brothers doing things with this magic rod. Superhero number seven is none other than the most powerful, Jesus. Jesus healed sick people. He raised the dead. He walked on water. He cast out demons. He multiplied food. He also knew things that others didn't know. He, like he, he saw uh, Nathaniel under the tree when he couldn't actually see him with his physical eyes. He, he rose from the dead, and after Jesus was resurrected, he displayed a strange ability to appear and disappear and reappear wherever he wanted. And after he spoke with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, he vanished. And most famously, he appeared to the apostles in a locked room. And the text doesn't say he walked through the door, knocked on the door, rang the doorbell, but he simply appeared there. And John chapter 21 verse 25 says, Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have the room for the books that would be written. He had so many powers, even of the stuff that's just written, that I don't even have time to list all of the superpowers he had, given the technical names. And those are all of the superheroes, all biblical superheroes, and they're other examples from the Bible, but I wanted to give you a, a taste of superpowers that God enabled mankind to have in the Bible. Next, I'm going to show you a picture of a modern superhero. So we're in the Bible days. Now let's go to modern. Now this is me last week. <laughs> and this is just a joke, but my wife called me and said that we had a swarm of yellow jackets that had gotten in the house. So I had to put on my superhero suit. I had to suit up, and I killed over 40 yellow jackets in the house in one day. So to the kids, when they were locking themselves in the room, I was a superhero last week. <laughs> so I had to bring it to life for your modern day. So that's what a modern day superhero looks like. <laughs> and... I want to now go over some supernatural powers accessible to us as the church nowadays from the Bible's perspective. Put up the next picture, number nine. 
And there are nine gifts of the Spirit that believers can activate as talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And as you can see, the nine gifts of the Spirit are broken down into three gifts of revelation that say something, three gifts of power that do something, and three gifts of inspiration that reveal something. Starting with that first gift, the gift of the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is simply the Holy Spirit transmitting his specific knowledge to you on something that you would have no ability or means to be able to know about with your own limited intelligence and knowledge levels. It is supernatural knowledge and insight being given directly to you by the Holy Spirit himself, not by your own mind or your own intelligence levels. The gift number two, the gift of the word of wisdom. A word of wisdom will give you the ability to be able to properly apply knowledge. It's like if something is wrong with your car engine. Now, knowledge is, if I tell you what's wrong with it and maybe give you an manual and show you your engine and say, well, these are the parts, this is how you're going up with the pistons and change that out. Now, that's knowledge, showing you those diagrams and telling you. Now, wisdom, on the other hand, well, actually knows how to fix it. Because giving you the book and telling you is one thing, but going in there and fixing those pistons is a whole other thing. That takes the gift of wisdom. Another example, I don't know if you've ever had a test in school, and the teacher allowed you to bring a note card or a note sheet, and you can write on your formulas. And even though you might have had this note card and note sheet, and you got to some problems with all of this complexity, and you like say, I got the notes, I got the formula, but I still don't know how to do this problem. <laughs> That's the difference. So knowledge is the formula, but wisdom is actually how to solve that problem. Number three is the gift of discerning of spirits. And that's where the Holy Spirit would give you supernatural discernment, insight, and knowledge involving demonic spirits, angelic spirits, and human spirits, and discerning between them. The number four gift there is the gift of faith. The gift of faith. All believers have a certain amount of faith. Indeed, without faith, none of us would be even Christians because it takes faith to be saved. The gift of faith is a supernatural confidence in God's promises, power, and presence. And I would say this gift also helps power the next two gifts as well that we'll talk about. Number five gift is the gift of healing. And that's a supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God that miraculously brings healing and deliverance from disease and or infirmity. If you want to see what that gift look like, be here for God heals tonight at 7 p.m. <laughs> the next gift, that, that gift of faith also helps empowers the, number six, the gift of the working of miracles. And that's the ability to perform deeds that are outside the normal operation of nature. Gift number seven is the gift of prophecy. And you see the Prophet Dexter operating in this often. Paul considers this gift the most value to the church out of the nine. The gift of prophecy is a special ability to speak forth the message of God. Prophecies from the Lord can cover an extremely wide range of situations and issues, covering everything from predicting future events like the Old Testament demonstrated uh, to giving someone special counsel, uh, encouragement, confirmation, instruction, and possible correction when it may be needed. That's the gift of prophecy. Number eight is the gift of unknown tongues. And that's simply the Holy Spirit giving you the supernatural ability to speak in a foreign tongue that you have no knowledge or ability to speak on your own. The ninth and final gift there, the gift of interpretation of tongues. It works hand in hand with the gift of tongues. 
The interpretation gifts allows you to interpret the unknown tongue that you or someone else has spoken. If you put up the next picture, number 10, it's a final gift for us Christians. It's the gift of eternal life. The gift of eternal life. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's a picture of heaven where he has mansions prepared for you, where there is no more sickness, there is no more sorrow, no more bills to pay. Everlasting life with him in heaven. And all of the superheroes you saw on that first slide with Marvel and DC, every one of them listed on that slide. They all age. They all die. And even the fictional main heroes die. But we serve a true and living God that's not fictitious, that has promised life everlasting with him in heaven after this physical life. All you have to do is accept and believe on his son Jesus that he came, he lived and died for your sons. And I hope this message encouraged you today that you could see that you don't have to look at the movies and have these heroes as somebody you look up to, but you can look in the Bible and see heroes that God actually empowered with supernatural superpowers. I hope it taught you something today, and, and as you live this life, it gives you confidence to know that no matter what situation you find yourself in, God can empower you to go through to be a conqueror. Well, if this message has meant something to you, you can send it to a friend. Just go to brothersoftheword.com and put in superheroes from the Bible. I pray that you be blessed. Thank you for tuning in today to Brothers of the Word because, brother, you need the Word. From brothers of-